All right, so the deportation plane has landed from the UK in Jamaica, regardless or despite all the protests from the UK side. All right, Mr. Big up to the Gleaner for these footages, and also I am sourcing some information right now from a British newspaper. So here we are. A deportation flight carrying 29 people landed in Jamaica from the UK on Wednesday amid concerns over home office tactics. So a lot of people are saying that the home office in, is in cahoots with the Jamaican government and they are illegally deporting people, violating their human rights, all kind of something. Nothing new here. Remember the Windrush scandal, a continuation of, yes, it's somewhat something different, but still in similar vein. Now, more than 50 foreign national offenders were who were being held in detention centers had reportedly been due to leave on this flight so this flight was supposed to have 50 people on it or more than 50 people on it more than 50 of them were due to leave on this flight but many of them were able to have their removals cancelled after their lawyers took action now i must tell you to me some of this seems like some kind of psychological um warfare going on i mean if you could imagine the trauma the traumatic uh, that it leaves on the psyche when okay you're going you're going you're going and then last minute okay you're not going anymore it's, it, it's got to be traumatizing for someone, especially for those who don't want to leave. And many of them don't want to leave. However, there are some of them that do deserve to leave. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the offenses as they were broken down. So, you know, they have this saying that a lot of people come back to Jamaica. Majority of them are because they overstayed their welcome. They weren't committing any crimes or anything like that. Well, we have the details of the people that came on this particular flight. The Titan Airway flight was not listed on the arrival board at Kingston's Norman Manley Airport when it touched down from Birmingham at 1.43 p.m. local time on Wednesday big broad afternoon. Not listed. So in other words then, there was no way to track it. You know when your relatives are coming in and you can track the flight and say, okay, they're playing, they're coming, so and so. This time you're waiting to see their arrival. This was not listed. This just landed. The home office initially indicated many of those due to be deported. Listen to this. The home office, this is in England, initially indicated that many of those that were due to be deported were rapists and murderers hmm one would say where did the home office get this information from and are they only sending these people home with a bad name making them look bad when in fact majority of them aren't no rapists ain't no murderers aren't any of that they simply overstayed their welcome there all right the home office initially indicated many of those due to be deported were rapists and murderers officials provided a breakdown of crimes committed by the offenders that arrived on that flight on Wednesday that said one person on the flight had been convicted of murder and four of various sexual offenses including rape. 14 people on the flight, almost half of those being deported, had been convicted of drug offenses. Remember, you know, out of 29 people, you know. So, I'm one of the people who like to say, look, not all deportees are bad people because I, I'm, I'm Jamaican, so I, and I know the stigma. Go on, dirty deporty boy, or workless girl, deporty girl, and deporty boy. I know the stigma that's attached, and this stigma alone makes it very difficult for these people to reintegrate into society. Say, for instance, if all you did was overstay your time overseas and you are now deported and, all right, you're back home, this is where you belong, you are going to pick up the pieces and move on, but the stigma is stuck on you. So a lot of people are now campaigning and are saying that majority of the people coming back are not offenders, they're not criminals. 
Well, the Home Office provided a complete breakdown of those that the 29 that came on this flight. I'm going to say it again. They said that persons on the flight had been Wednesday. One person on the flight that landed on Wednesday in Jamaica had been convicted of murder and four others were convicted of various sexual offenses, including rape. Hmm. 14 people on the flight, almost half of those being deported, have been convicted of drug offenses. Had been convicted of drug offenses. Six had been convicted of violent crimes, including grievous bodily harm and battery. And three have been convicted of firearms and weapons offenses. One person's conviction was for dangerous driving. So if you really ask me, well, I'm not going to say anything about that. I'm just going to leave that part for you right there. Dangerous driving. Imagine being deported for dangerous driving. Or maybe he was caught driving dangerously and then they realized that his, he didn't have any papers to be there and he was deported then. I can't imagine someone have it being straight in a country and then you're deported for dangerous driving. However, I have heard that happen in the U.S. to green card holders. Now, the Home Office said the total combined sentences of the 28 men and one woman making 29 individuals on that flight amounted to more than 150 years. Lawyers... Human rights activists and others have expressed concerns about the character, sorry, about the charter flight and the last minute nature of the decisions to remove some people from it. As it landed, the plane went to a far corner of the airstrip and police vehicles quickly gathered around it. Officers from the Jamaica Constabulary Force went on board, checked the passengers list and taking people off one by one. It took about a whole hour before a convoy of vehicles left the airport. Two police cars with flashing blue lights accompanied by unmarked SUVs, a white police coach, and a open back truck carrying the passengers' luggage. They had been restricted to a suitcase each, so it was barely a quarter full. They were taken to Harmon Barracks in downtown Kingston to be processed. About 40 family members along with onlookers and the press waited outside at the gates. A woman in her 70s was waiting for her son and said he had been forced to leave behind a family that he raised in the UK. Had traveled frequently to Jamaica before being convicted and jailed for an assault with a knife and later held for deportation he has this is what the 70 year old woman said she said he has friends who care for him very much up there you know in the uk he has six kids there in the uk and five kids here in jamaica he never forgot his family she said that he had been fighting deportation and his lawyers managed to get him off of a flight that was about to take off in 2018 but not this time he didn't know he was going to be on this flight it was last night he found out if he knew before people would have got things to him but he's with his family now so he doesn't have to worry she said some people waiting became irate with local media filming the proceedings one woman who referred to herself as Lala said she was waiting for a friend. She added, the reason why some people come back here with nothing is because they forget their people. They lose contact with friends and family and in those cases, they come back to an island which they have left as a child all those years they've been there. They do something and they send them back here. Every one of them is over there in the UK. Often their parents, they don't even have anything out here anymore. You're sending them back here to die. Anyone without relatives to stay with would be helped by the National Organization for Deported Migrants and 
other housing charities, said Oswald Dawkins, who runs the NODM organization. So anyone without relatives to stay with would be helped by the National Organization for Deported Migrants. Pass that information on. He felt most of those on board would have someone they knew on the island. But he felt the Jamaican government should be doing more to help those that were sent back. We have a flight that arrives here every month from the U.S. Wow. We have a flight that arrives every single month from the U.S. with deportees on it. But most people don't even realize it. Not even the media, he said. So people, you hear that? The USA is deporting Jamaicans on a regular basis. And I'm talking, you hear what the man said? One every month. And I was told this before, but I just did not follow up with the information. So one flight comes in from the US every single month. I remember I did some reading research and found out that they said in a five year span, the goal was to, the goal was to send back or to deport some 60,000 Jamaicans. And I did a video asking my audience to think about that. Think about an island as small as Jamaica with 60,000 deportees. Majority of them disgruntled. Like this one man said he was there to pick up a man that was now in his 40s who had left Jamaica at 5 years old. So imagine 60,000 disgruntled individuals placed on the island. And one has to wonder sometimes, is this some kind of a sabotage? Is this some kind of a way to destabilize the small country of Jamaica? I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, it's Jamaica them come from. And that's why I always tell people this too. Make sure you familiarize yourself with your culture. Make sure you go home as often as you can. Of course, those who ran off and didn't get their papers straight would not have been able to go home as often as they could. But there were people there who are being deported, who had their papers straight, but just got in trouble. And now your papers are being revoked and you're being sent home some 20, 30 years later. And you never once visited the island. There are also calls for the UK government to change its stance. The former prisons ombudsman Stephen Shaw, who has conducted two independent reviews of immigration detention for the Home Office, said... The inclusion of people who had lived in the UK since their childhood days since their childhood days on that flight was very cruel. Shaw commended in a report published in July of 2018 that foreign national offenders who had been in the UK since childhood should not be removed. Omar Khan of the Race Equality Think Tank and Runnymede Trust expressed concerns about the late cancellation of some detainees placed on the flight. These ad hoc reprieves are a reflection of the dysfunctional nature of the system. He raised concerns about the government's decision to go ahead with the deportation flight before the publication of the Windrush Lessons Learned Review. Some people were told that they would not be flying a few hours before the plane was due to leave. Others were removed from the flight just before it took off and they were returned to the detention center. Now, this is what I'm saying. Imagine what this does to the psyche, huh? Now, quite honestly, I think that's really cruel. Can you imagine sitting on a flight and the flight is about to take off and they hold flight, stop the flight and take you off? And there are people who... They've done this to multiple times only to eventually deport them anyways. It's like a man sitting on death row and he hears the electric chair down the hall over and over and over again. I don't know. Some people were told that they were not going to be flying hours before the plane was due to leave. Others were removed from the flight just right before it took off and they were returned to detention centers. Shaw said that while the legislation introduced in 2007 was clear that those who had served sentences for more than a year should be deported, there was some room for maneuver. The Home Office does not have some discretion on this issue. It can place much higher value on family ties. It just needs to change its approach 
It's cruel way of removing people. A Home Office spokesman said, The law requires that we seek to deport foreign nationals who abuse our hospitality by committing crimes in the UK. This ensures that we keep the rest of the UK public safe. End of story. All right. What I want my audience to do is like, comment, share, subscribe. Leave your comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about this one. In closing, I'm going to say this. I keep on telling people this. If you were not born there, they can deport you from there. And that goes for every one of us from every country in the world that we are scattered amongst. I've been to a lot of different countries and I've met Jamaicans in every single one of them. So I know that we are everywhere. But guess what? It's not your home. So stop going like Siaya Yad and stop going like you're permanent there. My advice to you would be Get what you can while you can. And if the if the ride is long, then enjoy the long ride. But keep out of trouble. We cannot ignore that report that came down with them. How many of them were drug offenses? How many of them were rape? And how many of them were sexual assaults? How many of them were gun charges and assault and battery with a deadly weapon? We cannot ignore that. So we cannot keep on saying that every deportee or majority of them are good people. It seems like this flight that just came in, majority of them was into something, all right, that caused them to be in a position they're in. Well, it's not the end of life. Pick your head up and carry on, my brothers and the one sister that came. The SoFlow TV, man. Like, comment, share, subscribe. I'm out. Peace.